In this tutorial, we're going to model organically using Edit Poly um, modifiers and uh, sub-objects of Edit Poly polygons in 3ds Max. So let's start by going to the Create tab and selecting the plane and just creating a plane. Um, I'm going to turn off my grid by hitting G. You can also turn it off by hitting the plus sign in your viewport and then hitting this button here, but G is the shortcut. Um, and then I'm going to go to my Modify tab and just make sure my segment amount is one in one. Make sure you turn on shaded and then edged faces so you can see the subdivision. Go back to your modify tab and then I'm just going to turn these down to zero or to one. Um, and we're going to build everything from this one basic polygon. So now I have a plane, I need to add an edit poly modifier. So go to your modifier list and from the drop down select edit poly. And this will allow you to start to modify these sub-objects of this geometry. So that a good thing to note with each of these, if you select any of them, um, so for example, vertex, there's going to be a menu within the, the command panel over here that says edit vertices. And by the way, you can drag this out if you need more room. Um, and then if I go to edges, there's one for edges and then border, there's one for borders, and then so on. So these little menus are what really allow you to make a lot of transformations to the geometry. So let's go ahead and go to Polygon and select the polygon. And then we can start to play with some of these. Whenever you see a little box next to a button, that's gonna, get, that's gonna open up the settings dialog for that particular operation. So you always wanna hit that so that you have more options to work with. And so once your object's selected, you can begin to change these values. You can see I can extrude this geometry. So I'll go ahead and extrude that. And then when I'm happy with it, I can hit this checkbox. If I don't like it, I can hit the X. Um, and then you can keep working and do additional extrusions. Um, another nice thing to know is if you use your transform tool, so in your toolbar up here, your move, rotate, and scale, that'll allow you to just to quickly move um, the sub-object of the geometry. So if I just want to move that face over, I can move it there. Um, you can do this with any of your sub-objects, but you can also rotate. And so whenever you have, this is called the gizmo, whenever you have a gizmo, you can either drag on the arm to go in a specific direction, or you can hover in between two directions and move in those two directions. You can also use your snaps. Um, usually if you're just kind of organically modeling, you want to make sure that's turned off um, so you're not snapping to anything. Um, and then the next one over is rotate, so you can rotate this face, you know, and I can start to give it a little bit of a cant. You can also scale the the different sub-objects. And so those are pretty helpful if you're just quickly modeling the geometry. So let's go back to our polygon sub-object level and go to the next uh, option on the edit polygons menu, which is bevel. This time I'm going to select these two faces here, and I'm going to hit bevel and then this gives me a few different options. So the first option is actually extrude, so it's very similar to the extrude command, but this also gives you the option to sort of bevel that extrusion. So you can kind of shrink it or grow it um, as you're extruding it. And then within this option, there's also different ways you can create the bevel. So you can do it as a group, um, or you can also do it by polygon. So if you do it by polygon, you see it won't be connected. Each polygon will extrude and bevel separately. You can see what that bevel does a little better here. So in this case, I'm just going to do by polygon, but you can really just uh, experiment with the different options there. Then I'll hit the check uh, when I'm happy with it. And then let's look at a few other options here. So you also have the inset option. So the inset, if you hit the settings button next to inset, that'll allow you to inset a polygon. So it creates sort of a new polygon within the polygon that you have selected. Um, you can hit check there. This kind of is nice if you want to like delete that. You can create a little opening or window in the in the geometry. Um, so let's look at a few other things. You uh, can also um, hinge from edge. One trick with the hinge from edge, if you se select this, you always want to select the hinge first before you change the angle. Sometimes it crashes your computer if you select an angle first. So you want to make sure you select a hinge, um, and then you can choose an angle, and you'll see it'll actually like rotate that face around the angle that you have selected. You can also increase the segments there so you get a little more curvature to it. So that can be a sort of useful command. Um, there's also extrude from spline, so you can draw a spline and extrude a polygon along it. We'll cover that later. Um, there's also bridge, which is a pretty nice one. So bridge, for example, if I want to bridge 
um, this polygon to this polygon, it'll create a tube basically connecting those two. So I'm going to select the two polygons first, hit bridge, and you can see it kind of creates a bridge between them. Um, you can increase the segments to see what's happening there. Uh, it looks like it's a little twisted, so sometimes you can just add a little twist to straighten it out. Um, this isn't the best bridge, but that's basically what happens uh, for the bridge command. And you can also taper the bridge if you increase or decrease that value there. So you can see now it's kind of tapered and fit in there a little better. So that's this option up here. And so those are the basic edit poly commands. So you can build a pretty complex geometry just using those few menu options up there. Other things that would be really helpful to do, if you go to your edge subobject menu and select, for example, you know, a few edges. Um, if you add, if you hit this connect button, that'll allow you to subdivide those polygons. So you could subdivide it any number of times. Um, you can also kind of move where they're located. But this will allow you then, if you go into your polygon, to have more uh, options. So for example, if you were modeling a hand, you'd want to have the base of the hand, and then you'd want to create little subdivisions for each of the fingers to begin to extrude from there. So I'll go ahead and extrude this one. And then, you know, what you can do is like select all these edges. Um, one useful thing, if you select an edge, there's this ring and this loop command. So if I hit ring, it'll select all the edges around that ring. And then I can use my connect command, you know, and subdivide it um, a little easier using that. So then I can select this polygon and begin to extrude that one and so on and so forth. So you can start to build and grow this geometry, a pretty complex geometry, just using the edit poly and using different commands here. One really useful thing though is to um, always be mindful of stacking edit polys on top of edit poly. So instead of doing all of these operations I just did in this one edit poly, it's good to get in the habit of using multiple edit polys. So for example, I could do just like some edit polys in the first one, and then in the second one I could go in and add more edges. I could add some edges here. By the way, if I if you hold down control, that'll allow you to select multiple edges. Um, so now I can hit, you know, I can hit connect, connect those two, select this edit poly and extrude this edit poly. And you'll notice that with this light bulb, if I turn it on and off, it'll contain any of those operations within the edit poly um, uh, on which I perform the operation. So it's kind of nice to just keep those, and you can stack a ton of these, so you could have hundreds of these. And if you do, if you get over a few, you probably just want to select them and rename them so you can be clear of what they are. Um, and then the last thing you could do is add a modifier to this, and we'll talk about modifiers later, but if you select from the drop down and add, let's say, um, let's say a mesh smooth modifier, you can start to smooth these geometries into some organic kind of form. Um, one important thing with the mesh smooth is that you have this subdivision amount and iterations. You never want to go over three. So don't toggle this or you'll crash your computer. So make sure you never go over three. The eye in a rendering engine can't pick up greater than three anyway, so there's no reason to actually uh, increase that value any more than three.